Oh, yeah, that's right. It's Wednesday night. That means it's time for this week of Gear Report, where we talk about, what do we talk about, TJ? Uh, reviews. Reviews, yes. Recently published and soon to be published. That's right. That's right. I got to keep people on their toes. So I've already shown you TJ. Uh, TJ is, uh, all right, my left hand, I guess. Since the camera makes it backwards, he's my left hand here at Gear Report. He'd be the right hand. That's what he looks like he'd be, but but the camera makes it backwards. So, uh, Karami? You're really, you're owning Karami now, aren't you? Going with it. Just going to go with it, man. Yep. If we okay. fight, it makes it worse. She's fine, right. apparently. And uh, let's see. Look at that. We already got some folks out there in the chat. So uh, Buck is out there being an overachiever as usual. Honcho Fett is there uh, saying hi. Look at this. And we got just greetings all over the place here. This is going to be a good show. I can tell. Oh, it was going to be a good show. Perkins is here. That's that's an <laughs> ominous sign. So we'll, we'll see how this goes. All right. I, uh, yeah. So anyhow, um, man, we've got a lot to cover. There have been a lot of things that happened here at Gear Report in the last week. So why don't we dive in with the main Gear Report page here. And uh, we'll scroll down through and see what all we have to look at. I think the last show we would have talked about the Humvee upgrades for the airlift bumper. I think that's the last one that we yeah. talked about. So that means this that uh, field plug review was the first one uh, or is going to be the first one for this week. Um, I shouldn't even open that screen because now I just had to close it to go open a different one. Here we go. Field plug. All right, so this is a pretty neat little device. Uh, Jason, <laughs> you know what? I should uh, I should read you the email that I got from Jason uh, a little while ago. Hope you have a good show. I'm at flight level 450 on my way to New York. Um, flight level 450 is 45,000 feet. So um, he, I think he was just showing off, really telling us that, but... Uh, but Jason couldn't be here because he's working right now. He's he's driving the, the sky bus. So uh, the field plug is a, a plug for USB that works with um, NATO. Uh, they call it the slave plug. It's uh, the 28 volt uh, outlet that's uh, that's on every NATO vehicle so they can jump start each other and power things. Uh, so it's a pretty cool little device that converts that to uh, five volts to charge phones and other, you know, USB powered devices. So uh, there's not a lot written here to look at, but I encourage you to go hit play on that and watch it. Even if you don't have any NATO compliant vehicles, it's kind of a neat little device to learn about. And it's a short video. So, you know, if you're interested, go check that out. Let's see. So the next one. I'm trying to figure out what order I want to go in here. The next one. I don't I want to come back to that one. We're going to skip the uh, first drive in the, the Battle Wagon 3. And we're going to throw this next one to TJ. So let me get to the appropriate screen for that. TJ has the Streamlight TLR RM2, which he's been telling us, you know, warning us, it's getting close. It's coming soon for, <laughs> I don't know, at least a week or two. Probably three. Maybe. I don't Probably know. Three. Counting has never been my strong suit. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you get a busy work week and it sets, it sets everything off week. But, uh, yeah, this uh, light's been, light, light works great. I had fun with it. I got to throw it in the pool and... Uh, Put it in the fridge, left it out in the, in the heat down here in Florida for a little while. Um, I said, didn't have any issues with it except, uh, you know, it, it singed me once when I, when I left it, when I was testing the runtime. 
got me a little bit. It was a little hot. Wasn't expecting it. I was like, all right, now I know. Yeah, yeah, and that's kind of surprising to me. Maybe it shouldn't be because the lumen output, I mean, the, the natural byproduct of that is going to be heat. And these LEDs, you know, I think of them in terms of LEDs get so much more out of a set of batteries. You know, they produce a lot of light with uh, while consuming less electricity. So I kind of expect them to be cooler, uh, but that's wrong. <laughs> yeah. LEDs will burn you. Um, yeah. I mean, it wasn't burn, burn, but it was hot to where I was like, oh, crap, don't touch that again. Let it cool yeah. down a little bit. There's the redneck pool. That's what that was. <laughs> That's oh, the pool. Okay, so I didn't get that. When I saw the picture in the review, I didn't get that that was the light sitting at the bottom of the pool. Yeah, I threw it in the pool. I said it was good for, you know, 30 minutes at whatever, you know, a meter or whatever. I was like, perfect. The pool's about a meter deep. <laughs> Man, going the extra mile. I appreciate that. Good job, TJ. Thank you, sir. All right, folks, go go check out the review if you like. Uh, he gave it four out of five. That's pretty darn good. All right, so I think for our next one, why don't we go to why don't we go to Carami for this one? And I'm gonna get to the appropriate one here. Which one did we end up with? The ARB. Easy deflator kit. And that's our Donna. If you're if you're wondering our that, that's her, our sweet Donna. I had already committed to not even acknowledge that was there. Okay. Yeah. We can do that as well. We can we can do that as well. Well you talked about it, so now maybe you need to explain why you have a or or maybe uh, you don't. I don't know. Well, you know, she's my ride along companion. Yeah. Sometimes my wife has a headache, guys. Whatever. Don't judge. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Doesn't everybody have one? <laughs> right? Uh, no. So, um, so she's kind of like our Jeep mascot for, you know, just in case Kim's riding by herself and she wants to be in the carpool lane. Uh, <laughs> it works for the cameras. So, um, I'm just kidding. We live in the country. There are no thing, there's no such thing as carpooling, but. Um, it just seems like the thing to have. And if you're at camp, you can put her up and, uh, you know, she'll keep burglars away or if you're, if you're growing some corn, you can put her in the field and the crows will leave it alone. There's all kinds of uses for Donna. Great entertainment factor. Makes people ask questions. So the ARB recovery easy deflator kit. Um, so it took me a little bit to figure out how to use this damn thing. There's, um, but read the instructions. They came. They came with um, very understandable instructions that I failed to read at first. And then once I slowed down to sound read them, it's um, it's a wonderful little tool. We were able to air down the the thirty fives on the Jeep from thirty eight psi to twenty psi in like ninety seconds. Um, so it's a great little kit to have in the back of the Jeep for airing down. The cool thing about it is that makes it a little different than the, the screw on kits that you buy, the, the cheap screw on kits that you just screw on each valve. Um, they just put the stand in, that's the out very, very slow. So if you're in a line at the off road park and most of those people are, are trying to get on the trail quick, and if you're sitting up there and it's taking you seven, eight minutes a tire to air down, there are going to be some pissed off folks behind you. So it's pretty neat that this thing, when you screw it onto the valve stem, it has a separate portion that screws out the valve stem. So it takes the valve stem completely out. And so you can just hear the air whooshing after that. And like I said, it, it took us from 38 pounds of pressure to 20 in about 90 seconds. And then you just simply screw the valve stem back in. You gotta be a little careful and not get it too tight. Um, super easy to use, uh, very lightweight, comes in a little carrying case for 40 bucks. Uh, I think this thing is gonna be tough to beat. And really, that's it. It's All so right. simple. There's really not much that's else to it. it. Yeah. Um, and for airing down Donna, it can take her out in about a minute. <laughs> <laughs> if you're trying to put her back under the bed before someone comes in or anything, it'll, it'll get her down there pretty pretty quick. But I've never done that. No. I, never. I, I didn't assume you had. <laughs> or had. I, I didn't assume anything. <laughs> you know, what you do in the privacy of your own home, that is between you and however many walls you have there. 
There's at least four. Well, yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to make any assumptions. You know? <laughs> so, um, okay, good. Uh, go check out the video, folks. It's a, it's a neat video, and um, it's a real video. You know, uh, oftentimes <laughs> we get the, uh, I, I'm bad about, you know, I'll over script things sometimes because, you know, I wanted to go smoothly and, you know, really, I, I think sometimes it's overproduced and it doesn't really feel authentic. This video is authentic. You should go watch it. I, I, I encourage that. We don't believe in instructions. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's, uh, it gets a little entertaining as well. All right. So let's see. What else do we want to look at here? Oh, see, so you got a few in a row here. So, why don't we do this? We're we're gonna we're gonna go back and forth here, and um, I'm gonna do one now, and then we'll go back to one of yours, and we'll, we'll just go back and forth until we get them done. Gotcha. Close that one, and uh, let's see, the Humvee parts for sale. All right, so this is uh, I hate to call it an article or a review. It's not okay. But it's uh, something that, that uh, it's actually a couple of weeks ago I went in and updated this. This post has been here for a, a, more than a year, uh, probably two, three years now. And it's where I list any extra Humvee or other, you know, uh, parts or things that I have for sale. And uh, I'm, I'm going to mention it here just because, uh, you know, we never talk about this. And it occurred to me earlier, I got a lot of cool stuff up here. And there's some Humvee people that watch this. Maybe they're not aware that, uh, you know, I had a friend ask me to buy out all of his Humvee stuff. And, and I've actually got to go pick up more of it. I've, I've picked up a couple loads already. And, uh, and I got to go get more. And some of this stuff, you know, he, he's been hoarding. This guy's been hoarding stuff for decades. So who knows what kind of stuff uh, we're going to find as we dig through all this. So, you know, full sets of doors and, and you know, body panels and uh, speedometers of various different types, oil pans, springs. Check that out. Various machine gun mounts. This is not your everyday stuff here. Ammo can holders, more machine gun mounts, fuel tanks, uh, a roll cage for an H1 Hummer. I could keep going here, but you know, you, you can go scroll through and see all the different stuff that's available. It is a very eclectic, odd mix of parts for H1 Hummers, military surplus Humvees. Um, and then there's even some stuff down towards the bottom that, um, oh, where is it? Man, there's a lot on here. Still scrolling. Anyhow, there's stuff at the bottom that uh, I probably can't talk about. But if you scroll to the bottom, oh, no, I don't think I'm even allowed to show that. All right, we're going to scroll off of that. Um, yeah, neat, neat stuff in there. So if you're interested in any of those uh, things, there are directions at the top of the page on how to start the discussion about acquiring those parts. Look at that. Good evening. Gun peeps and, and Jeep peeps. we got Jeep peeps here. Um, we may even have some camping peeps here. Um, but it's always good to see Gary in the house. Yep. Hello, Gary. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let me find another one to go back to. Let's, let's do the gas cap now. This would be another Karami production. Ooh, actually, that is just a Jeremy production. Um, <laughs> oh, I think, yeah, I think right. I'm not sure where she was when we were doing this. But, um, you know, it was, it was a, it's definitely a very budget item. It actually looks great on the Jeep. Uh, we had the Jeep over here again today putting a, a light bar on it. Um, but this gas, gas cap looks great. Um, so visually, it's very aesthetically pleasing. Um, the coating on it's nice. It's a good matte black. I do like that it has the lock because I think that thieves are generally lazy. And if they see a locked gas cap on a car, hopefully they move right along to the next one. The downside to this is that um, it's very, very thin metal. And when I say thin, I mean, it's maybe a millimeter, if, if that. I mean, it's, it, it's very, very thin. So it wouldn't take, um, 
but a screwdriver to actually pop the lock if you wanted to. Um, like I said, so I hope the, the visual look of it's enough to deter a thief. Um, it looks kind of beefy. It, it looks beefy on the outside. <laughs> um, when you when you hold it, it's almost like you remember those little metal ashtrays that restaurants like McDonald's and Burger King used to have the little tin foil ashtrays. Mm, yeah, it's been like that. So, um, and as far as how it mounts, the screws just screw into the plastic of the filler neck. Um, so again, it's not like hardcore they in weren't. there. They weren't. And, and they line. they actually didn't line up with the factory screw holes, so we had to we had to put four new sets of holes in the plastic filler neck. Uh, right. But overall, still very very happy, um, especially for the price. It made a big aesthetic difference in the Jeep. Uh, it's on a veteran's Jeep, so he's got the flag as many places as he can put on the thing. Um, so overall, it. It was he something was I would buy. Yeah, it. he's very, very happy. He was very pleased with it. So, yep. no instructions. I don't know why companies aren't putting instructions anymore. I guess because I know people we like don't us read don't them. read them. <laughs> but, um, you know, even though we don't use the instructions, we'd like to know they're there if we do. <laughs> right. So, so but, yeah. I suspect, I suspect that the issue is they can produce the products but their mastery of English isn't sufficient to actually produce no, instructions. So the only real complaint and the reason that we rated it so low because, you know, is because the hinge, it feels like the hinge is kind of flimsy. And so who knows how that's going to last over, you know, the course of a couple months. So we'll just have to see. But, so that's why we gave it a three out of five. But overall, it looks great on the Jeep. It's very happy. Uh, definitely something to would buy again. Yep. So, Mitch, have you got a Jeep yet? Not yet. When you get one, would you put this on your Jeep? Absolutely not. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why is that? Just because of the material. I, I've, I've done some of these installs um, for different materials. I would try it out, but I probably wouldn't leave it because when you go on the trail, you want stuff that's sturdy. I used a... Um, a lock box under my seat for my firearm and I had like triple rolled steel seats under your, you know, it, it was sturdily made that it would take hours with, you know, angle grinders and saws to get into, you know, again, it's, it looks nice. I like the flag on it. That's pretty, pretty sweet, but I want something that if you're going to put a lock on it to be a little more heavy duty. So I agree with, you know, I'll check it out. I, I always check out their Jeep stuff just because it's been a long time and I miss my Jeep. So, um, but yeah, don't think I'd go for it for right. that one. Okay, fair enough. All right, so let's. Um, all right, let's go back to me. I'm going to. I'm going to pick. All right, we just did that one. Let's do the let's do the first drive, the one I talked about earlier. So, this is um, this is kind of useless to look at because it's really just an embedded video. But um, I, I put a couple videos up. You know, I, I don't know that I uh, that I opened the other one. Uh, maybe I didn't post it. Maybe that was just on social media. But um, so was it last Wednesday or Thursday? I don't know. All the days blurred together. But one of the days last week, the Battle Wagon 3 arrived, the latest Humvee in the, the gear report. Uh, stable or garage. It looks more like a garage than a stable. I got to be honest. And um, if you remember, the Battle Wagon 2 had some issues and it took almost a month, like three weeks, two and a half, three weeks to get the engine even spinning and then to get it running and all the other stuff it needed. It was a good month before it rode anywhere. And within just a couple days, the um, the Battle Wagon 3 had been on the road. So if you'd like to share that experience with me, if you want to sit right there in the Humvee with me and, and feel the sheer joy of riding in this beautiful, multicolored, no doors beast, then uh, go check that out. Click the play, you know, watch, watch the video and uh, 
I sped up the boring parts uh, so you just get you just get pure joy without any of the boredom that comes with like sitting at a stop sign waiting for traffic or anything like that. So I consider it a public service, I guess. All right. Let me go back and look here. It took three hours just to get it off the trailer. You know, it it did take probably 45 minutes, 50 minutes to get it off the trailer. The, the driver had some issues navigating the, um, the, the cul-de-sac with a really long trailer. Uh, so that was, that was kind of interesting. She used to do a write up of a locking Humvee fuel cap. So I had a little mini write up, uh, as part of the, um, the daily updates for the Battle Wagon 2. So it had a locking fuel cap that was uh, installed there. I want to talk about the Battle Wagon 2. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Battle Wagon 2 did take hours to get off the trailer. And uh, yeah, I'm going to take credit for that. I, I, I recommended a very... Um, difficult to implement plan and Daniel went along with it. And, uh, you know what, I'm going to pin it on him, Daniel, that's your fault because just cause I suggested something stupid didn't mean you had to go along with it. How's that? Um, as it's the American way, I'm going to pin the tail on that donkey and not take, uh, not take credit for that myself. No. You should know better to listen to you. Yeah, seriously. Right. Um, no. No, and, and Dan, Daniel was a great help in, uh, in taking me down to Georgia to pick up the Battle Wagon 2. And I was a little upset that I wasn't really able to make the time to go down and pick up the Humvee this time. Um, wow, indeed. Yep. See what happens when you make comments here, Daniel. You open yourself up. You never know what I'm going to say. Um, but But I did say I appreciate everything you do. So, except for the trolling in the comments sometimes but but we're not going to talk about that all right let's see if we have something else to go back to here we did the gas cap ah here it is i knew there was another one we have a portable air compressor <laughs> that donna you said donna right yeah, yeah. Se yeah, seems kind of fond of. Yeah, she's uh, she's got her own spot in our intro video. If you guys check that out. So the I was actually really impressed with this um, with his air compressor. Um, it was small and compact. It came in a tire repair kit. It had a couple of tools that were, that came along with it. It had the um, air tube. Um, it has a, an, you can use two different adapters to power it. You can either power it with your battery or you can power it with a DC adapter. Uh, for the Jeep, it works out beautifully because the DC adapter is in the trunk. I just plugged it up and the cord's long enough that all I had to do was move it either to the left or the right of the Jeep. And between the power cord and the tube, it was long enough to reach all four tires. Um, the, the, the unit itself, it never got hot. Um, so it never, it never, um, it was never hot to the touch. So um, it has a little carry handle, but the, the unit itself never got hot. The downfall or the con with this unit is that it does take a while. So it took, a, it usually takes about 20, 25 minutes for us to get back up to the 36, 38 PSI on all four tires. So that's the only downfall. And you, you've got to be prepared to sit there for a bit. Um, but you know what, if you're out, on the trails and you, you don't have access to air or if you have a flat tire unexpectedly um, while you're overlanding or anything of that nature with the tire repair kit it's a it's a great little kit for less than a hundred dollars so um 77 bucks yeah so, and honestly it, it pumped the tires up in six minutes per tire from 20 pounds to 38 yeah. and comparing that to a smitty built or a vire which costs double that price even more than double that price they're still around three to four minutes per tire. So you're only actually two minutes slower per tire than, than those for much smaller price point. Now, the difference is, of course, I didn't see any ways to take these things apart and clean anything or anything like that. So I don't know what the longevity, I don't know if you have to, there's any place to oil them, you know, some of the compressors have that. 
Um, so I don't know what the longevity of this thing will be, but right now we've used it uh, three separate occasions and it's done phenomenal um, with no issues whatsoever. And also one thing I love, I told you before, Jeff, I'm a sucker for a flashlight. I swear to God, you could put a flashlight on a, on a chastity belt and I'd buy it and wear it just because there's a flashlight on it. Um, and seriously, it's, it's that bad. So this thing has a flashlight and so I'm like, woo, got a light, let's just buy it. <laughs> so, so we awesome. loved it. That's, so far, I think it's the, our favorite product yeah. um, that we've tested because it is such a good little unit. For so how, how's this um, project that you were working on for uh, sub $100 Jeep parts, how's that progressing? Yeah. So we've probably got maybe eight videos in that playlist. Um, and like I said, out of, out of all of them, this is probably the favorite thing. Uh, the headlights, of course, she still absolutely loves. Those come in at 80 bucks. Um, so, so yeah, the the little deflator, great to have. Um, I don't think you can beat it. There's a lot of digital options out there uh, for deflators, but and there's there's digital options for for these compressors too. But our train of thought for the deflator was, if you're out on the on the trail, you and your batteries die, um, what do you do then with the deflator? So that's why we went with the analog dial on that, but. So we've yeah. got about eight products, yeah. I think, in the, in the budget under 100 playlist. Very cool. All right, that would make a great like uh, a great article on Gear Report to kind of summarize all of that. Um, should you care to go down that road at some point? For sure, you definitely will. Right. Let's um, keeping things moving. Mitch, you want to say anything? Go to gearreport.com for all the latest reports of gear. Man, it, he's he's like a robot, you know? And, and I say that in a good way. It's like uh, I try to catch him off guard and throw him with the question when he's not ready, and he just rolls with it every time. Well done, sir. He has a pre-recording. I, just, I didn't want Mitch to feel left out because he doesn't have stuff to talk about right now. So... All right, so let's see. I'm going to go back to one of mine. This one, I don't know. We probably have talked about this at some point before. This is the um, the overview article. This is the main article for the Battle Wagon Three, and uh, the reason that I am showing it uh, with what maybe again is that I've done something different on this one. On the prior two uh, Humvees, I had an article for the vehicle, like summarizing here, here introducing the vehicle and describing what it is. And then I had another one for mods and upgrades and stuff that's done. So I said, you know what, I'm gonna wrap these all into one. Let's see how this works. And uh, we'll see. I think last time for the Battle Wagon 2, I got, uh, I got about a month into the project and the page was taking too long to load to edit, so I had to make a new page. So we'll see how long I can get away with this. So we got a little history of uh, the Battle Wagons. So we have the original, we have the Battle Wagon 2, and there's Daniel's trailer. Um, it's a nice trailer. And then here's the Battle Wagon 3, a little description of the process the agony of waiting for that uh, paperwork to clear. You see it being picked up here. Um, I was fortunate, although I wasn't there, I had a friend that uh, knew, knew my truck was being picked up that day. So he hung around just to shoot some video as it was being loaded. So I appreciate Steve doing that. Um, and then, you know, some other options that I looked at with uh, some different types of Humvees at uh, shop in North Carolina. And then uh, another shop down in Florida that I looked at before deciding to get this uh, M1165A1, which, uh, as far as I know, is the most recent, uh, most updated, upgraded Humvee that's available for civilians to buy. The expanded capacity and reliability enhanced vehicle model. So all of this stuff we may have seen before. I talk a little bit about what the plans are for it. And then under that, I said, you know what? I'm just gonna start listing 
day by day as we go through things. There's some more. Here we go. Daily progress. So you see it showing up on the 30th and then, uh, you know, being offloaded and hooked up to the tow bar and pressure washed, which is an absolutely amazing uh, process. Just seeing how nasty these, the, especially the tan ones get sitting down in that humid environment at the storage lot in Georgia. They get this brown funk growing on them that, uh, you know, I spray them with uh, purple power bleach and a little bit of water and let it soak for a bit and then pressure wash it. And it almost looks new. It's, it's really amazing. So, um, you know, went through and cleaned everything up, tried to get a, a quick assessment. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to get some tires. I've got one of them that's showing, uh, uh, that it's old and needs to be replaced. Um, started bolting stuff back that uh, they cut during the demill process and, um, you know, ran, ran some diesel purge through, changed the, the fuel filter and, and the diesel purge helps clean out the fuel system. I ran it just through the fuel filter and the injection pump in hopes that I wouldn't have to get the injection pump rebuilt. So I was able to purchase this Humvee um, as a non-runner at a big discount because it didn't, you know, because it didn't run. Uh, it probably saved me ten or twelve thousand dollars, I guess, uh, buying one that didn't run. Turns out that on this picture on the left, one of these little check valves, actually the one that's in the the longer tube that had been taken apart, um, that's the main fuel supply check valve, and that it was jammed up. So. That was preventing fuel from getting to the engine. That engine had less than 30 miles on it since it was installed, according to, you know, assuming the odometer was was correct. But, you know, everything had the appearance that it probably was. And then that check valve got jammed up and it wouldn't run. So they dumped it and, and I was able to pick that up. So uh, if you want to watch that first time starting it and the sheer elation of starting it, making it run. You can go watch that video. See, you know, all, I'm not going to go through every step that I went through here. I'm just going to scroll and you can see different things here. If you want to, if you want to go through each of them and, and see uh, the whole process, then uh, be my guest. Um, if you have ever thought about picking up a surplus Humvee, I highly encourage you go back through each of these, go through the battle wagon one, go through the, the, uh, the daily updates for the battle wagon two, go through this uh, for the battle wagon three, and you will get a, a real sense of the absolute time commitment and all the little details of things that you have to go through to make sure that they're right and ready to go and safe and all that. So, um, yeah, so that's what we have in there. Oh, you know what? At the bottom of that, let me show you something else that was kind of neat today. Um, there's a picture of the Battle Wagon 2 on the set of a commercial that we did. I think that was last October, about a year ago, uh, with a company that did that commercial. And I actually, I actually got to do some paid acting in that one. It was kind of cool. I got to dress up like, uh, like I was in the army. And they gave me an M4, and I got to carry it around and act like I knew what I was doing and uh, drive the Humvee and all that. So it was pretty cool. Um, so they reached back and asked today, um, hey, the company wants to do another one. Can we, can we get a Humvee from you again? So I don't think I'm going to get to act in this one, but it'll be cool to put the, put the truck to work and make a little money on it as much as it's costing It'll be cool if it starts earning its keep. So that, that'll be pretty awesome. Thanks. All right, folks. That is everything that um, that has been done in the last since the last show. Why don't we change gears to stuff that will be published soon? So who who has something they'd like to talk about here? So I got the uh, still finishing up the Mantis X10, just getting some pictures in, and then finishing right in that, and then uh, gonna start shooting the Savage uh, 110 Tactical. Nice. 
yeah, it'll be fun if I can find a, a range to go uh, reach out and touch something. Bring it with you when you Working come up that to North Carolina. That. We'll we'll find some place. Okay, I will do it. I'm guessing we're up, right? Yeah, I was. I was waiting. It looked before right. like like you were right. talking, but muted, and then I was gonna show. I'm trying to I was gonna show down. it, and she said, "I can't show it. I have to just talk about it." I'm like it's not this is not uh, the place for that. I gotta keep him straight, dude. So we've got we've got two coming up. Um, we've got a light bar mount that we just installed on a 2012 JK today. Um, so I got to put that video together in those pictures. Um, but our favorite thing we felt like cinematographers this weekend was a, a little action gimbal stabilizer for a cell phone. So uh, I walked around like I was Michael Bay all weekend. <laughs> wow. Um, and inebriated Michael Bay, but Michael Bay nonetheless. So those, those are those are both coming up, and I think uh, they should be fun fun reviews. All right. Awesome. Looking forward to those. Uh, let's see. Mitch, do you have anything coming? Negative. Negative. All right. We need to take care of that, um, which I probably told you two, three weeks in a row. So at some point, I'm actually going to send some requests and get some products sent to you. I've reached out as well. I'm just waiting to hear back from a few places just because, I mean, I can send an email just as easy as the next person. So um, I'm hoping to hear back probably by the end of the week, if not beginning of next week. If I do, I'll shout, I'll send you an email and you can see if that's something that would fit good for your report. Cool. All right. It's not any kind of like personal entertainment device, is it? Negative. We frown on those. Yeah. Donna too. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's see from me. I've got a variety of different uh, kind of little items. I, I think I probably showed these little titanium sporks. I've got, I, I didn't think to bring it where it was close by, but some, uh, a titanium fork and spoon. I'm hoping uh, that in one of the upcoming weekends, I'm going to be able to go on a backpacking trip. So that'll be awesome to try that. And I think everyone here, uh, as far as on the panel is looking at going to SHOT Show. So I'll share with you something that I am working on, um, assuming that we actually get to go to SHOT Show, which I'm not convinced that we're actually going to, but we shall see. This is my halter top that I'm going to wear. I thought it'd be kind of sexy. Sweet. Um, I thought it was a tactical kilt. Uh, yeah, that too. Yeah. And um, I think if you turn it sideways, it's got a wee hole, and then one of never mind that 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 uh, that was even bad for me. Okay, but uh, so this is like the neck gaiter face mask thing, and I've got some heat transfer vinyl. I'm going to experiment with cutting out on the vinyl cutter, like a Gear Report logo or something sarcastic. More than likely, it's going to be something really sarcastic and probably inappropriate, but I'm gonna iron it on here and see how that works. I got, so this is like a dark gray one. And then I've got uh, for range day, assuming we're allowed to have range day, I've got one in don't shoot me orange that, uh, cause I'm real, I'm real fond of wearing the bright colors at range day. Um, so then I can tell people when they ask, oh, it's so you don't shoot me, dumbass. Um, cause I don't trust you. Um, cause that, that, that's a good way to win over people is with, with statements like that. All right. So those are some things I have coming that, uh, may or may not be interesting and lots and lots and lots of Humvee stuff. I've got so much money wrapped up in that truck that I have to, you know, get every bit of content out of it possible. So, all right. Well, how are we doing on time here? Let me go back and look at comments. I have not seen any comments in a while. Actually doing good on time. Look at that. And as soon as I said it. Yep. 
You don't know me as well as you thought, Jacob Perkins, because that's kind of my sweet spot there. Sar the, the intersection of sarcastic and inappropriate, that's, uh, that's really, that's where I live, honestly. It's pretty good. I'd like to think I'm good at it. Uh, I don't know. You be the judge. You are. You are good at it. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Anyone have anything coming up? We talked about reviews coming up. Uh, anything is probably just going to be uh, the the deep south off road and what is it off road and I'm, I'm getting it wrong. Well, down, south, down south, down south, off road and outdoor. Down. Why did I say deep so, south? Yeah, I was thinking yeah, of Donna. Yeah. See, yeah. there's the inappropriate again. Yeah. See, your mind's the wrong way. Stop thinking about an overlanding trip planned um, going to Kentucky, to the National Forest, uh, Daniel Boone National Forest in Kentucky, and finishing, at, finishing out in um, Amish, Amish country. country in Ohio, next, Ohio next weekend. Okay, so just for the folks who may not be aware, I'd like to thank everyone's aware. Uh, since I butchered your channel name, you're posting stuff there. So that you're posting a few things that don't show up on Gear Report, right? So, right. To tell people how to find you and uh, and and what else you have going on there. So basically, um, you know, our reviews are just a little different. We're a little unfiltered. We don't read instructions. We like to just open a box and go. Um, but our, our channel is not going to be just reviews. Our channel, we're getting into this overlanding thing a little harder, and we want to eventually just start going out and and push ourselves further and further, how long we can go living out of the Jeep. Um, so our first couple trips are going to be three day trips, hopefully then five day, six day, who knows, maybe nine and 10 day, however far across the United States we're going. Um, so we want to record that journey and, and we want people to see what, it, what it's like for newbies who have never done that kind of thing. You know, right now we're taking hoe baths with baby wipes. Well, maybe we get a shower next time. And, and so basically we just want to record everything to watch people so people can watch us grow along and, and maybe don't make some of the same mistakes we do um, along the way. So so if you want to find us, it's Down South, Off-Road and Outdoor on YouTube or Facebook. Also, we're on Instagram, Down South, Off-Road and Outdoor. So pretty easy. Um, you know, again, if you watch our reviews, uh, sometimes we have foul language. I may work on starting to censor that, maybe. But um, if I can't have fun and be myself, uh, what's the point in doing it? So uh, I think uh, that's about it. We get to see our adventures. We get to see some of the things that we're doing with the G. We recently did. Um, we're doing. We're getting ready to post a review about our bedding situation, how we're living in the back of the G, um, and how that's not didn't go so well this weekend. So we actually have a new plan that's going to be coming about. Uh, before we take this next trip. So um, we'll have videos up about it. And just showing the progression that we're making. Um, I personally were battling back and forth about doing a rooftop tent because I don't want a rooftop tent. He, of course, wants one because, you know, it's a super cool gadget. Um, so, you know, it's just us, us trying to make do with what we have versus, you know, trying to spend fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 on a new rig or a new bunch of equipment and just trying to just go with what we have. So, so, so you know what's going to happen is you're going to lose that battle and you're going to end up with an overland trailer with a rooftop tent on it and Probably. water tanks wow. and solar right. panels. Well, that's just and, it. He does want an overlanding trailer. We've looked at those. Um, but you know what? At the end of the day, I'm the one doing the driving. I'm the one that has to maneuver that bitch. If anything happens, potentially, um, if we can't get the back of the Jeep worked out, then you know, I may eventually get in on the rooftop tent. I just don't really want to be on a rooftop tent if we've got rain and wind and that shit flapping around. And, you know, there's still, you know, from we've got friends that have rooftop, rooftop tents and there's still some modifications they're having to do because the husband's kind of a big guy as well. And so, you know, again, I want to make the back of the Jeep work. So. I think the back of the Jeep is going to work, Jeff. Uh, the issue is we're on a budget. So the, at first we bought a two inch, uh, mattress we cut it to fit well i'm a fat bastard two inches i sink right to the bottom i sink right to the bottom and i'm sleeping on wood so then we went and we bought a cheap one inch topper so we thought boom three inches everybody likes three inches right that's enough 
Um, no, <laughs> three inches is not, not enough, Jim. My fat ass needs four. So now we're going to buy a four inch gel mattress topper. And uh, I think we're, ha we're in the process of uh, having a platform, a small, low profile platform built for the back of the Jeep for the sleeping range. But, but see, that's the other thing is that I don't want a permanent platform because I still want to use my seat. Uh, my back seat so mm. it's, it's trying to work through all the things you know because it is my daily driver but we want it to still be able to do all these things and so it's just trying to work through all those little nuances as we go and so yeah follow along see what we um what we come up with watch the battles that we have with one another you know the and nice see what Donna's up to. marital battles that we have they always go well <laughs> we put everything in there yeah 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 so you have the advantage as the queen of the Jeep. If if things aren't working out, you can just kick him out. <laughs> there's that. Yes, there's that. So Me and Donald go in the woods. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Oh, oh. I'll, I'll pop that bitch in her titties. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say titties on this. Oops. Sorry. All right. <laughs> well, um, everyone, thank you. Uh, we we went over as usual but man we got a lot to cover so i appreciate everyone being here everyone on the panel tj jeremy kim mitch thank you so much for giving us a little time for the folks out uh, who who watched live for if if anyone was watching in replay hey congratulations you made it uh way longer than anyone would have expected um you may need to seek professional help actually if you're still watching at this point but uh, but we appreciate you so thanks and uh you know what until next time we'll see you at the range